I'm Johannes Debos, music director of the Canadian Opera Company in Toronto. I've led the acclaimed CUC Orchestra for more than a decade. And I'd like to introduce you to some of my incredible colleagues. We begin our series with a look at La Traviata, one of Giuseppe Verdi's most celebrated and popular operas. It's based on Alexandre Dumas' novel La Dame aux Camélias, which later became the source material for many films, including Moulin Rouge. The opera is full of show-stopping areas, drama and heartbreak, all the ingredients for an emotional roller coaster. The violin is featured at one of the most moving moments in the story. And today we're going to explore this with a longtime friend and colleague of mine, violinist and CUC concertmaster, Marie Berra. Marie, welcome. Thank you. It's unbelievable to be on that stage again with the auditorium in our back after nine months. Nine months. But here we are and we have some time to talk. Um, first of all, I wanted to ask you a little bit about your career and your, your path to the violin, with the violin, and then maybe also to opera. Yeah, it's a, it's a path that I think was just laid out in front of me and I just followed it. It just seemed very natural. I have, a, you know, come from a, a musical family. My parents are both musicians and um, I had a friend who said, I started violin lessons <laughs> and I thought, oh, that's cool. I'll you do you that thought too. it's cool. Yeah, so I, I don't know why. That's and great. It, it's, uh, I mean, in retrospect, of course, I know that the violin was the right instrument for me just by temperament and physically and all that. Um, and then I just uh, ended up in Toronto uh, from the recommendation of someone who really strongly thought I should study with Mr. Zafer at U of T. And it's really there that um, I played my first opera, Don Giovanni. Well, you remember and that? I remember you remember it. the, the day Absolutely. of the performance? It was, it was incredible, the, um, the whole thing. I, I just fell in love with it. So you got immediately the, the full experience. Totally, yeah. And sort of the... Hooked you for were life. <laughs> hooked for life, <laughs> yes. exposed to the, 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 the powers of this art form. Yes, absolutely. And I think we are working together uh, since 10 years, 10 and a bit. It's really fantastic to have a collaborator in you um, because I think the concertmaster is sort of one of the, the, the most important roles in an orchestra to, in a way, translate um, the conductor's ideas or help the conductor um, to translate the ideas into the orchestra so that then we all um, act and play with one idea and thought. Today we're here to talk about one specific opera um, and in this opera there's a very significant moment where the violin, your instrument, somehow is in the spotlight. And the opera is La Traviata by Giuseppe Verdi, probably one of his uh, most uh, celebrated operas and for some good reasons, yeah. I would say. So we reach act three, the, the final act in this piece. Uh, we heard this incredible preludio one more time, the music that we heard at the very, very beginning of this opera, this mysterious, uh, beautiful, silky string uh, preludio, so to speak, and then we see Violetta, the, the main character, um, kind of alone with herself, sick, and somehow everything comes to a halt. A letter is delivered to her, and she's reading that letter. And then what happens while she's reading that letter? Could you describe a little bit that moment? Well, the, the violin solo is um, the same music, although slower, and in a much darker key of G flat major, which is just so wonderful, the warmth of that key. Um, and it is the music 
of um, in Violetta's aria in the first act. It's when um, Alfredo interrupts her. And so I think that as she's reading this letter, the Verdi had in mind to remind her of that love that she had, but with a sad tinge, let's say. And do you feel somehow emotionally connected to Violetta, who is reading the letter? And of course, I, I don't know, maybe you can you can share with us, you have played this opera so many times, yes, and how, how this moment uh, unfolds in the various productions you have done. Maybe the, um, the Violettas are reading the letter in different ways. In the pit, you tend to not really look at the stage too much because it's, it is actually a distraction we, from what we're doing, which is the music, you know. I'm always extremely envious of Violetta's just strictly because I would love to be able to sing coloratura soprano. <laughs> <laughs> that I was not endowed with the, those, um, those, uh, that capacity, unfortunately, but um, that is my relationship to it, all singers is always a complete awe, you know, of what they do and the, the power of their instrument to, um, to go directly to emotions because they are, uh, their instrument is a human being. It's very different from a, a violin where we have the same emotions, but they have to go through yes. the wood and yes. horse hair yeah. and all that. Yeah. And, and yet the singing is kind of an ideal for you as an instrumentalist in a way. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I find myself uh, talking to my students so often um, about how to uh, imitate a singer, especially when we're speaking of slides on the violin, which portamento they call um, for the voice. Um, you mean when you play with one finger <laughs> across well, the, the fingerboard? Well, it can be different fingers, but <laughs> there's a little bit of a, uh, not a clean way between the two notes. Yes. And um, that our job on the, on the violin for sure is to imitate the voice. That's what we do. And I've been blessed with being able to hear singing so often, um, so many days of the year. And it, it just really has helped my playing, I think. But I, I can assure you that the singers who grace our stage are often commenting how blessed they feel that they get the sounds to hear that you provide as of an orchestra. Of course, of course, so, that's um, a two-way street. Yeah. It is, it is, and yeah. it's, it's quite wonderful. Um, Marie, I think we should actually move on to some music. I'm, I, I have to say, I have palpitations. My heart is really moving fast or faster than usual. It's breathtaking, actually. This hall is so wonderful. You, the smallest sound is clear and it fills the hall, even though it's so large. The, the, the sheer beauty of this, I call it an instrument itself, actually, our hall. Uh, I wanted to thank you, of course, for having this, this conversation here to join us today. and. Um, to, sh to share with us your perspective on this moment, but also a bit more in general on what it's like uh, to be in the opera environment. 